Good evening everybody, how are you? How are the house things with you on this fine Monday evening? Uh, yet again we bring you a fantastic project this evening from our Kath and uh, Kath has designed Valerie. So if you've uh, already downloaded yours, the front of your pattern should look like this. I've got the rest of it on my desk. So this is Valerie. Good name, isn't it? It's a nice strong name, Valerie. And it's a beautiful, beautiful little purse. It's, I mean, it's not so little. There we go. I've got mine. My hearts are on, a, on a different side. It doesn't matter. <laughs> but that's, that's the sort of size of it. Now, obviously, I know Kath says in the pattern you can enlarge it. You've got templates, which is the best thing ever. So you've got templates that you obviously you download at the same time and that you can just trace off or cut out, whichever you prefer. And um, there's the hearts on there as well. So there's lots going on in this pattern. So although it's a, it's a making it Monday pattern, it's obviously perfect, perfect, perfect for making it Monday for a mim. But of course you can please yourself how you make it up. If you want to line it, obviously we're going to line it because we're going to do exactly what Kath tells us to do. Or, um, or whether you enlarge it. I mean, it could make a really quite nice um, kind of like shoulder, you know, cross body bag if you made it big, bigger. The thing is, the pattern is there for you to download and we appreciate every time every one of you downloads it. Um, I know my gold members, my, all my gold members get it for free if they choose to, to get it. It's on the gold members page under projects. And uh, you all know if you're a goldie, you know that you get it for free. And everybody else just pays a pound. So I thank you for that. That's brilliant. It helps us keep going, helps me pay the bills, <laughs> all that sort of thing. But um, yeah, so we're going to make Valerie tonight. You'll notice I've got a camera just here. And that's because I'm going to try and get a fairly close up view of stitching around the zip because I thought that was quite important to show you that that kind of finer detail. Um, so, yeah, so welcome, welcome, welcome. It's so lovely to see you. It's such a great day on a Monday when we look forward to our making it Mondays, don't we? Been going such a long time now. How long? Mm. 14 months, 15 months, something like that. And pretty much every Monday uh we've done that for the last uh, I don't know, 13 14 months so thanks for that okay so tonight i do have a giveaway and um, I'm going to do a giveaway for YouTube and Facebook because um, I don't know if you remember last week we had a giveaway and um, I could only I could I can't amalgamate the names on YouTube and Facebook. So um, it, it's difficult to I can't write all the names down. That would be impossible. <laughs> oh, how long have you got? I'd still be writing them. Um, so I'm gonna, I've got two two gifts to give away, which is super. I'm going to show you in a sec. Um, I would really, really, really appreciate it if you could share the live. So um, this is not this is not part of why how you get um, the you know you get the giveaway. The way you're going to get the giveaway is by making a comment. So uh, the more comments you make, um, the more chance you've got of being picked out. And I do I really do do it random. I I get all the names up and I have to do it on Facebook. I don't know why, but I have to do it afterwards. Um, on YouTube I can do it straight away, and that's the best way. It's complicated, isn't it? But on on Facebook I do have to wait. I don't know why that is, but anyway, needless to say, it's all done randomly, of course. So um, I would really appreciate it if you um, shared the link to this Facebook. I know it's, it's more difficult on YouTube. Um, so we can get some more people come and join us and, uh, and have a nice Monday evening with us just for an hour or so. And I, I would appreciate that. Um, so share, share the post if you can. It's quite easy to do if you're on your phone. Um, and then all your friends will maybe, um, will maybe join in. That'd be fun because then we can say hello to them as well. Um, so yeah, so the two giveaways I've got. Now, the other thing I wanted to talk about is that if I just happen to pick a, um, a lady or a gent that's outside of the UK, the prize will be a five pound Amazon voucher, okay? 
The reason for that is, um, uh, I'm not going to say who it was, but I had a giveaway quite a while ago and it cost me £17 in postage. And really that's not fun. That's not fun for me. <laughs> so um, can you imagine? So um, I'm not going to um, send things overseas. It's completely and utterly ridiculous pricing in the postage. And of course it is, everybody's in business aren't they so um so for anybody i pick that's overseas outside of the uk then um you will get an amazon voucher and i would need your email address to do that so as long as you're happy to share your email address with me then i can send you an amazon voucher for five pounds and please go to google and translate that into dollars or whatever um so that would be if I picked um, uh, somebody outside of the UK. If I picked two people that are inside the UK, <laughs> I've got um, two, little, two little things to send out. Well, there's, I've got pairs. So I've got a little heart and a, a little stuffed bird and they're white. And then I've got another little stuffed bird and a heart, <laughs> which are kind of almost well, linen-y. I, I was going to say calico, but they're not really calico colours. They're more linen-y colours. Um, difficult to see, I know. I'll hold up the white. So I've got two prizes, one for YouTube, one for Facebook. And these little critters here, the heart and the little bird, they are um, pre-stitched, pre-stuffed, on hangers, as you can see. Um, you can see they're brand new, got tickets on still. And you, what you do with these is you can paint on them, embroider them, you could add fabric to them, you could um, get your little ones to write their names on there and embroider. Um, can, you know, there's so many things you can do. So um, these are, um, so one set for YouTube, let's say the linen coloured ones for YouTube, and the white ones for Facebook. And they're really lovely. They're nice squidgy, squidgy things. Um, and uh, they've been hand stitched clothes. So you know what I would do? I would unpick that and fill these with lavender and have them hanging somewhere in your house so you can smell the lavender. I, I, that's what I would do. You don't have to do that. <laughs> or you can spray them with potpourri spray or your favorite perfume. That would be nice. Yeah, so um, those are the giveaways. So um, to be in, in with a chance of getting one of those, um, by the way, if I pick the same name on YouTube and Facebook, I will pick again. So we've got two different names. Um, yes, just comment. The more the comments you make, the more chance, obviously, that you'll get to have your name put, picked out. But my, my one plea this evening is to share your post or share this post, this Facebook post. I know it's more difficult on YouTube. Um, and so we can get some uh, some more people join us, some some new people. That would be super. Um, and then it'll all help me stay afloat making making it Mondays. OK, so hopefully that's OK. I'll put them to one side. If you want to be reminded later what they are, I'll just shout. If I don't hear you, I'll try to read the comments. <laughs> you know, I don't do that very often. Um, and so, yeah, so happy Valentine's Day if you celebrate that sort of thing. Um, I did get John a chocolate heart, excuse me, a chocolate heart. And um, he put it in the fridge so it's nice and crunchy, but it is a solid heart. So if he can get his teeth through it, he's a better man than me or, you know, better person than me because <laughs> I certainly couldn't do it. Um, and uh, yes, yeah, so so and there was some happy birthdays we had in the goal group as well. We had Val and we had Karen. So happy birthday to them. There's probably loads. In fact, if it's your birthday, say in the comments, say in the comments and then we can all wish you a happy birthday. That, that would be a comment then, wouldn't it? And then there'll be loads. <laughs> So yeah, so um, do, like I say, do share the post, share the love, and then that'll keep us all afloat. So I'm going to put you on the overhead. I'm going to move my machine slightly out of the way so we can see what we're doing. And we're going to get going in making, in making Valerie. I'm just going to get myself sorted here. So there we are. I've got my pieces cut. And 
you get you have to cut two little pieces for the um, sorry for the for the zip tabs okay let me show you the one I made there we go so I forgot to top stitch mine so I'll, I'll get a black mark from Kath for that but uh, I chose some lovely fabrics now when I did the heart I did it on a different side to Kath but that's okay you don't have to do it on the exactly the same I'm going to give you a little tip about um, fraying the edges of the hearts that you apply onto onto the, the background heart if you like. Um, I chose the colors that match the fabrics um, but, it, but you know what you don't have to do that. You could do what Kath did and have solid fabric and then have pretty sort of di different colored um, fabrics for the for the hearts um, that's entirely up to you you don't have to have the hearts <laughs> if it's something that you doesn't float your boat um, you know you don't have to don't have to have anything really um, I found a tassel in my drawer so that's good um, but you'll notice that the the tabs here and I want to show you this is important the tabs here what we're going to make first well after after we do the heart um, and there's a bit of a tip that I want to give you about um, how you get the ends of your tabs a little bit neater certainly than mine um, but I you know I'm going to give you a, a, some some advice on that so yeah so it's a lovely little um, lovely little purse and it's got little bug fabric inside which is just gorgeous now I don't know oh yes I I think I might know who this fabric is by just to say it's called 100 Years, created by Kim Schaefer for Andover Fabrics. Yeah, I think that's where it all comes from. I think. Don't quote me, but I'm pretty sure that's where it came from. Yeah, so there we are. Um, the other thing we're going to do is to put a zip slider on, because you can see I've got a red um, zip slider onto a yellow zip. So I'm going to show you how to do that. So it's, a, it's quite a nice little project, really, because you're going to learn a few bits and pieces if you haven't done already. Okay, so um, I've got my zip prepared. I'm going to show you how to do this, okay? But this is my prepared zip. It just takes, um, it just stop, stops me um, being slow in, in putting the dem demonstration together. So that's my zip. Let's just pop that to one side. Those are my two tabs. We'll, we'll do those almost kind of next, really. Um, I've got my lining fabric here. Now, I don't know what brand this is. I got fat quarters. I was hoping on the selvage it would tell me, but it, it, it didn't. Um, so I'm disappointed about that because I really hoped that I could tell you what the fabrics were because there's another one in, it was a trio and it was, um, it was like soldiers. It was, I think it was the soldiers. So sort of more like that. Um, yeah. So I'm disappointed I can't tell you, but you could do reverse Google picture check. I have no idea how to do that, so don't ask. Um, <laughs> anyway, I thought it would be quite nice, since we're in Jubilee year, that we should start thinking about our, uh, our lovely queen. <laughs> so um, what I've done already is I've already put one little heart on there. You get the templates for these. And these are stuck down with either Bonder Web, Heat and Bond, steamer seam anything you like you don't have to stick them down you could put stitch it straight on now you don't need to stitch that down if you've or if you've stuck it on okay it doesn't need that extra but we have I have cut a little heart out um, from the blue to match the blue zip and to match the cups and saucers and I'm going to stitch that on and what you could do is what I've done is put a little bit of quilters tape on the back um, and that just holds it in place so you don't have to worry about it slipping. You can place it down like that and it's stuck just there, just right in the middle. And so I'm going to stitch around this outside. Now you'll notice, slightly different from Kath's, I've cut the second one, and there is a third one actually, but I've cut the second one with my pinking shears. There is a reason for that. And once again, uh, I've gone off piste a little bit, but it's a good tip. Okay, this is, this is gonna be a good tip when we get to it. So I'm gonna pop my lining to one side, I'm gonna pop my outer piece to one side, and I'm going to bring in the, my, my, my side camera. Now you'll have to sort of bear with us here because um, it's right close up. I'm hoping I've got it in the right position. I'm just going to get this moved a little bit and then I might have to sort of rejig um, as I uh, move the camera across. Yeah, I thought I might be, might have to. Which way? That way. There we go. So you've got a fairly good view of my needle 
just in case you think that's perhaps a good thing. <laughs> but I'm going to try and use my stiletto to hold my fabrics without having my hands in the way. So we will see how we go. We'll just have to shout if you can't, uh, if you can't see. Now, um, I'm going to take my stitch length right down to two, only because um, it's easier to get round, um, it's easier to get round curves like this if you've got a little stitch. If you've got a big old clunky stitch, it's honestly, it's going to clunk its way around um, and it's not, it's not easy. It's not easy to get around those curves. But what we'll do is we'll pivot the needle um, into the fabric so I can turn it and hopefully we'll do a half decent job. So you have to bear with me while I, sometimes my hand will get in the way. So let's just get that in position. I'll just get my foot control sorted. Um, and then we'll start going and we're just going to take it easy just little baby steps going all the way around so as soon as I get to the point I'm lucky that my needle my sorry my foot lifts out of the way just trying to get that thread out let me just give it a cut bear with like I say there will be times when my hand is in the way but I'm going to like I say I'm going to try to use my stiletto so it's easier for you um, and then just work your way around. And a lot of this will be easy to do, or easier to do, if you have a pivot and turn sort of functionality. If you can keep your needle in there and your foot can come pop up and down like mine is doing, um, it just makes it super easy. So we're just coming to the point of the heart. And again, I can just swivel it around to come down the other side of the curve of the heart and you can see even though my stitch length is on two I'm only doing one or two stitches one there again just one that allows me to get a half decent curve so there's no rush just take your time and then just finish it off now I don't back stitch on top top stitching like this I literally just go over the first couple of stitches and that makes it really neat you can see oops let me get it in shot for you you can see how neat that is now because we've done um uh, used our um pinking shears what I can do is I can get my pokey tool my, my stiletto and look how easy that is to fray because part of Kath's design is to fray the edges of the heart okay and because i've used the pinking shears it um and it's kind of like a shabby chic it really does suit um the the sort of um british fabric if you like so by just using something sharp a needle or a pin will do you can just um, easily easily fray if if you've got it straight of course you can fray it but um, I just find that this is actually a little bit of a cheat and you can't see that that is a zigzag can you you can't by the time I've finished I don't know if I can show you as well on the one I did I might show you and then you'll be able to see but just take your time work your way around and that really does make a super duper um, frayed finish let me show you look at that it looks super doesn't it and then of course you could always do a little one in between um, on the original one that I did um, earlier today you can see how that looks and I've uh, I frayed both layers really well just to get that shabby chic look um, yeah and this has been left nice and neat yeah so although um, Kath has given you the instructions to um, to do this the uh, zigzag on these um, just the outer one you can of course do it on the the inner one as well I think that looks really cute I, I really like it and then of course because we've frayed it more of that red um, fabric will show uh, underneath um, yeah so it's a bit like a frame isn't it good so um, well, what we'll do is I'll just go to the um, overhead camera again um, just so we can do the next little stage I'll just move my, my gubbins out of the way. So we've done the heart. Now, you, as like I said before, you can decide whether you're going to do the heart or not. If you've got busy fabric, like the, the gorgeous London, I heart London fabric, um, you may not want to. You may think uh, it's perhaps not appropriate. Entirely up to you. We, that's a great thing. We have choices in these things, don't we? 
So I'm going to bring my ironing mat in. I'm going to switch on my iron. Before I do my tabs, before I show you how I do those, let me show you how I changed my slider on my um, zip. Okay, let's just move that out of the way. So you want to cut your length of zippage, which is, um, Catherine has put that in the, in the pattern of exactly how much you, you need. Um, it's a deliberate um, length of zip because it allows you um, quarter inch, three eighths of an inch, depending on your stitching and cutting, etc. cetera, um, at, the, at either end. And you'll see as we stitch it what I mean by that. So uh, get yourself a piece of zip like this. Um, and I don't know, I don't think that is cut to size, but it doesn't matter, I'm not going to use it for this. And um, you need to split your zip in half. So be brave and slip, slip in, well, slip it, you know, just tear it apart. It does it easily. And what you're going to do is on the, and I've got the teeth showing. The, so the teeth are right side up, okay? I can see my teeth. If I run my finger along there, I can feel the loops the light nylon loops of the of the zip so and that's facing up to me so I, I don't know if this is because I'm left-handed right-handed or what but this is how I do it and I can be a bit ambidextrous because my mum was left-handed so I tend to sometimes use my left hand quite a lot but anyway this is how I do it I leave my left hand piece as it is with my right hand piece I'm going to just snip away about a quarter inch of zip of zip teeth okay I'm gonna pop that down so you can see it so you're not cutting away the tape you're just cutting away the zip teeth let me bring it up so you can see what I mean by that can you see that okay hopefully you can uh, I did have some ladies in a workshop a few weeks back that were cutting the tape and leaving the zip the zipper teeth <laughs> so I just wanted to make that really clear now because we're cutting some of this zip teeth away to put a slider on may I suggest that you cut your zip a quarter inch longer than the pattern because then if you cut this just a wee bit too much and uh, maybe that end will show that cut end will show I'm just suggesting that that might be a good idea so cut your zip just a wee bit longer, nothing, nothing drastic. If you follow Kath's pattern to the letter, which is absolutely 100%, that's what you should do. Just make sure when you cut that it is only a quarter inch that you're cutting away. And that's plenty for you to grab hold of. So if you look at the zip slide, I know it's a bit small. I could zoom in, but that would spoil it for the rest of the hour. I always look at the zip slider like a frog. <laughs> so you have the head end here, the fat end here, and then the tail here, a bit like a tadpole, I suppose. So and that's how you want it to be, exactly as that's sitting. So with the fat end, you're just going to pop that onto the left hand piece of zipper tape. Now, this is always easy. And if you've ever tried to put a zip on, you know that it's always easy to put the first slider on. Not so easy to put this one on. OK, but all you're going to do is you're going to feed this right hand piece into the zip slider and you sometimes you can hear a click sometimes you don't sometimes you can put it in a millimeter and other times it will go in a couple of millimeters needless to say I think it's gone in there fine this evening but it you might want to just practice that because that's what counts okay now you could turn this towards you so you're pulling the zip away or you can just get hold of both pieces of tape. So I'm going to pop it down so you can see. You're going to get hold of both of those pieces of tape with your thumb or whatever's comfortable. And you're just going to pull your slider. And that's the slider put on. Perfectly fine. No fuss, no bother. We are going to put tabs on there. If Well, not this one, but <laughs> this one. <laughs> so I just want you to take a look at this, that it is only... Well, if I said three eighths, it's, I suppose that would be the maximum. But it's enough for me to get hold of the tape here to be able to pull that. Some people find uh, holding it there 
and pulling away better. There's no right, there's no wrong. It's whatever you find works for you. Lots of people use um, gadgets to do this. There's tools on the market to do this. But why spend your money when that all you have to do is snip off a little bit of zipper teeth, okay? So I'm saving you hundreds of pounds. <laughs> Not really, but you know what I'm saying. There's no need to have a gadget. Some people will use a forks. I have never in all my years ever got a fork to work. If you do, bravo. <laughs> That's all I can say. Right, with this zip, which is the one we're going to use this evening, I've obviously already put my slider on. And what I've done is I'm gonna bring it up close so you can see, I've used the zigzag on my machine to overstitch the end of my zipper tape. Can you see how that looks? So all I've done is pop that under the foot like that and done a five millimeter, you can do seven, zigzag on the spot to secure that end. It just makes life easier. So now I'm ready to put the zip tabs on each end. Okay, so we've got two little pieces. I'm a bit dark on my mat, so I do apologize. Great fabric though, isn't it? Isn't it great fabric? I love it. So we're going to fold them in half, first of all, and you're putting short ends together, okay? Short ends together. Let's do it like that. Uh, there we go. And then, oh, that's hot. These irons get so hot. And then what you're going to do, did you know there's glue on my mat? I can feel it. And then what you're going to do is bring the short edges into the center. Okay. And you should end up with a half an inch either side. Okay, so short ends to the center. So let me do that again. I'm gonna move it because it's sticking there. I did something earlier with some bonder web and I foolishly uh, had it hanging over the edge of my project and yeah, caught it. So um, short ends into the center. So we do one maybe, and then do the other. And if you want to, use some best press because you really, really, really will get a super duper um, crease, if you like, using best press. Also, if you've got a clapper, which I know I'm not gonna be able to reach, it's way over there in my room, um, use a clapper. Put a clapper straight on top of that and it will be absolutely pristine. And then what you're going to do is fold again. So now you've got a lovely neat edge. Don't worry about the fact that you've got raw edges on the end because they're going to be concealed into the seam. So just fold that again, give it a press and do press it. Do make that effort. Um, you know, it's just worth it. So I'm just gonna move my iron out of the way and hope it doesn't fall off the table. So those are my two zipper tabs, okay? So they're gonna go either end of my zip. Now they go right to the center of my, my crease there. So if I pop that zip on there like that, and please use quilter's tape. I've got some handy, I think I might. So pop the zip end right to the center and then you're folding over like that. Okay, what we'll do is we'll use some quilter's tape. It's always nice. Um, I must admit it's, uh, it's sort of, um, it changes, changes everything when you use zipper tape and you don't need a lot. I'm only going to put it on one half just so my zip stays where I want it to be. And you can see by st stitching the end of my zip, it doesn't, it's not splaying out like that and I have to keep bringing the, the legs together. You can see how that works. In fact, it's a little bit too far into the center. Let me just take it off and reposition it. Okay, there we are. And if you want to pop a pin in there, Clip it, you know, with a quilter's clip just to hold it, but you're going to pop it under the machine and you're going to stitch right across. So we'll do the same the other end. We'll, we'll pop a little bit of tape on there. You don't have to use quilter's tape. You can just, nothing, use pins, clips. 
is uh, I think you know we we got to the stage where you know exactly what works for you. And but I'll stick to my tried and tested methods because that's what I know. So again, you're just popping the end of your zip in there and you see what that looks like. So you can see now, because I only cut my zip down a quarter of an inch, it's well, way, 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 way inside. It's not going to show. It was just a little word of warning. So now all we're going to do is push that over. And you'll notice that the zipper tabs go are wider. That's intentional. It means that your uh, machine will be able to, your machine, your presser foot, will be able to grab that before it starts stitching the zip. And to be honest, it's only that part you're going to see if you wish to see it. Because, <laughs> you know, let's not get too pedantic about this. Let me just straighten that up. And you can trim these away. So there we are. So there's our two ends. So all we're going to do now is stitch. And we're just going to stitch down here. OK, if you want to stitch that, by all means, but you're not going to see it really. So I would just stitch down there and down there. I haven't, I'm not changing my thread either, guys. I'm just keeping my thread as it is. So let's bring in, uh, let's get on the side camera and uh, bring you in. Hope nothing falls off my desk. And um, I'm going to change my zipper foot to my zipper. Well, actually, I don't for this, so I'm going to leave my regular foot on just for the moment. Um, I've got it on two. I think I'm going to just increase that to 2.4. And once again, I'll get my fingers out of the way in a sec. Um, we're just going to make sure that our foot catches our fabric, okay, the fabric here. And because it overlaps a little bit, it gives you a good chance. And stitch, if you can manage 16th of an inch, brilliant. If you can't, then even as much as a quarter inch is fine. But ideally, you want to stitch about a 16th of an inch. Okay, so that's what you're sort of aiming for. Something that looks like that. Hopefully you can see it. So all we've got to do is the other end. And again, just as about a sixteenth of an inch. There we go. Just cut the threads. And there's the other end. Oops, sorry. There we go. <laughs> I'm not used to a camera so close. Now don't worry if your stitches don't go as far as here or you start right here. It's quite good to start a little bit in because sometimes your machine will just sort of suck the, the um, fabric under. Um, and to be honest, you're not going to see any of this. Hopefully all you'll see is about that much of your zip. It depends on how you stitch. OK. So I hope you're commenting. I hope you shared the link so other people can join in and, and enjoy making it Monday as well. Um, be nice to have new people. Um, oh, also, we must. I must get um, YouTube up. So just bear with me a second while I see if I can find um, YouTube. It's not always easy. <laughs> um, let's see. I wonder if I can do it that way. I don't think I can. Just bear with me, guys. Just bear with me. Um, let's see if I can get it. Oh, yes. Here we go. Lovely smashing so now I can see the comments you didn't know that but now I can so there we are so there is our zip done ready to put into our little purse okay so now let me go on the overhead again because it's it's not as close and it's easier for me to manage and um, it's uh, is the next stage is to actually pop the zip into the into the purse itself okay so here we are so just let me just make sure I'm following Kath's pattern. Yes, I'm happy. So there's two ways of doing this. And she says this in the pattern. You can either stitch the zip into the outer fabric and lining at the same time, or you can just do it one at a time. And honestly, I prefer, especially with the curve, I prefer to do this one at a time. Um, Catherine also suggests snipping into your zip. Now, if you do snip into your zip, which I will, I get the right scissors for that, um, 
you only want to snip in um, about a quarter inch max okay about a quarter inch max and I would wait until you started to pin this on there before you snip now let me just get some pins handy I'm going to pin this you know I don't like pins really but I'll do this for your benefit <laughs> so you're doing right sides together right side right side you know this is the right side because you can see the zip slider if I turn that over that is so not the right side <laughs> so right side to right side and we're going to start pinning this in and in fact we could trim off our our little ends here so trim trim this up you don't have to but I find it I just um, find it more accurate if I do it like this so let's just take all the bits away and right sides to right sides so you're going to start about a quarter inch in so if I lay that down like that you can see difficult with the fabric but you can see that's where my zip tab is and it's about a quarter inch away from the bottom of that raw edge you, you can start the other way around you can start from here if you want to I just happen to to start from there this time so um, this is where you can start pinning now obviously there's going to be a point where you you're you don't have a straight edge and you're going to start curving round here to come up here so I want you to start thinking about now snipping so I'll just put one more pin in just to hold okay so we're okay so far and obviously you know and if, you, if you're an experienced stitcher you'll be fine with this but you've got to take that zip around that corner so it finishes up here do you know I think my zip's a bit short but never mind we'll be all right so you've got to be able to get that round there fine I mean I'm just going to move this up a fraction I think it's because I've been snipping it this afternoon I've been trimming it back, I'll be honest with you. I'd cut it wonky and then I trimmed it back. <laughs> but that's fine. So as we come to this um, curve under here, you can snip, as I said, you can snip into your zip, but not as far as, as, the, as the zipper teeth, you really will come unstuck. So it's probably maybe just under a quarter of an inch, but you'll find let me hold that like that you'll find that that goes around the curve beautifully now because you've snipped it okay so what you can do is you can pin uh, your your zipper tapes far far easier than if it wasn't snipped so it's a good tip excellent tip thank you Catherine so just hold this down now of course you could use your quilters tape absolutely 100% because that really will hold it all in place and you're going to come up right to the end here now if I hadn't snipped my zip this would be about a quarter inch away from the end but I think you're okay with that so you can see how that looks and pull it and please put more pins in if you want but you can you see how that um, sorry can you see how that looks when it's been snipped it, it just sits beautifully around that corner and even if I was to flatten it you can see how that's sitting okay so I'm going to do one at a time because that's why not why not so I'm going to bring my machine in I'm going to get on the um, other other view I'm just going to settle the the camera down so you can see and I'm going to change to my zipper foot let's just get that out of the way there we go and I'm putting my um, zip uh, onto, hold on, let me get my, sorry. I'm putting my zip, there we are, I can see now. Sorry, I had to get my hand in there. On the left-hand side of the foot. So um, when you look at the foot, you've got a, a, a definite right, right and left-hand side. No need to adjust your needle position. Your needle will automatically sit right in the center. Um, if you put it on the right hand side in this little groove here, that'll be fine as well. OK, so all we're going to do is follow our zip all the way around. Now, because we're, we're going to be honest, you could it's better. Oh, sorry, I'll bring it in. It's better to stitch with the zip teeth side facing you okay it's better to stitch like that rather than 
stitching on the where the wrong side is only because on the right hand side on the right hand side of the zip you've got the zipper teeth which really do prevent your um, zipper foot from going over the, the zip teeth uh, to be honest they w I doubt whether they would but just in case you're worrying about that it's better to stitch on um, let me get let me get this right <laughs> like that so you're stitching right sides together with your zip and where you can see the zipper teeth okay and try and get as close as you can without it being ridiculous and your machine will let you know if it's struggling so I'm doing this um, so I can see now um, this is going to be difficult for me to show you I'm going to be moving my slider in a, in a little while so as I come up to it now okay I'm going to move my slider out of the way and I'm moving it towards the back so my slider is is up here now and as I come round and like I said you might find this easier go, so you can see the the zip rather you know the zip tape rather than the, the outside of your um, purse but um, you quite honestly you if you've pinned it well or if you've used quilters tape it should be absolutely fine but like I say if you're at all worried just pin tape take your time and I'll try and keep my big fat hands out the way and I'm going to take my pins out so as it comes down you can see how it looks hopefully I'm pretty much there try and get it level with your zip come down and then just cut your threads okay not too bad at all a little bit out at the top oh, sorry I'm a little bit out here but um, I'm, I'm okay with that just have a look at the front and make sure that you're happy with how that looks make sure it's not too you know you haven't got a big sort of step in there somewhere um, just make sure you're comfortable with how that looks and I think that looks quite neat so now what you could do is you could actually put your lining on so um, so again it's right sides down let's get the right one so it's right sides down so if we look at it like this you've got the right side of your fabric here right side of your lining here and that just sits on top like that and you're just going to stitch all the way around from the from the bottom it's hard when it because it's so I'm so zoomed in right away around so you're just following the zip around so we'll just do that again but obviously you can stitch both of these at the same time and hopefully I'm going to just follow the line of my fabric sorry let's see if we can get you a little bit better view so I'm just going to follow the line of my fabric and the, the seam allowance is probably more like 3 8 of an inch when you're putting a zip in um, and just use I'm just using my pokey tool to help it stay down try not to stretch it because we're on a curve here so try not to stretch it make sure that zip keeps down you can open up the zip if you want to if you think that's going to be better for you open up the zip okay so just follow it around and you know what in in the olden days we used to hand stitch we used to baste didn't we so if you feel that's better for you then then please baste and I'm going to use lose uh, move my zipper tab in a minute uh, slider in a sec so just come round follow the lines keeping your fabrics together and now I'm just going to move my zipper slider there we are it's there do you see um, so I'm just going to my needle is already up I'm just going to move it out of the way line up my edges so everything is looking neat and just follow down get to the seam cut our threads and there we are so that's stitched our lining in it's a little bit wriggly but I'm sure you'll forgive me for that so when we turn it around on that one side we've got our lining in place and we've got our um, 
out of fabric in place as well. So both of those are stitched in. What I'll do is I'll just go to the overhead so I can show you a little bit better what I've done. It's because it's sometimes a little bit difficult to see. So I've put one side of the zip in. Okay, so that's what it looks like. And you can see that the zipper tab is stepped away from the edge of the, the purse, which is exactly how it should be. And also it's following the line of the zip all the way around to the other end. So dead easy. Okay, and ideally you're going to press this. We'll, we'll, we'll do the other side and then we'll press it. And then we're going to top stitch. We'll do as we're told and we'll, we'll top, top stitch it. Okay, I'm happy with that. So then what we're going to do is we're going to put the other side in. So to do that again, if you remember, we do right sides together. So let me have a think about what I'm doing. <laughs> I always do this and then think, what am I doing here? <laughs> there we go. So just line up your fabric. So really what you want to do is to make sure that these edges are parallel. So let's flip it over so you can see what that looks like. And we're going to stitch along here. And if you're feeling brave, stitch your lining at the same time. All you're going to do is sandwich that in. So it's going to sit like that. Okay. Um, perhaps I'll do that for speed. Um, but don't forget, we're going to snip into our zip here. So it lays flat. You can see how it looks. It doesn't want to go on that curve. It wants to stay up there. But we're the boss, so we can actually snip that and it'll be much, much easier to stitch. So let's just snip into that. So again, um, I would say minimum uh, quarter inch apart and maximum four, uh, quarter of an inch snipping in. And do do a few. Let's have a look. Do a few. Come out of the way, zip slider. So look, you can see what that looks like. And like I say, just for speed, I'll go to the front camera for a bit because you've already seen how to do this, unless you say differently. And all we're going to do is stitch this in. Again, I'm going to. I can never. I can never remember doing it. It's having to think, isn't it? And do you know what? It's very hard thinking. So <laughs> I've got this now right sides together. So my zip is right side to my fabric. And I'm going to put my lining right side down. But I'm making sure all my, my corners are meeting. Look, um, my long edge here, the my back, back edge to my purse is lined up as well. And uh, by the time we get to it, that will all be lined up at the bottom too. So what we can do is we can pop some pin in, pins in. And also I want you to um, think about what's comfortable for you, whether you're going to stitch on the lining here or whether you're going to flip it over and stitch so the zip teeth are on the... Um, are facing up to you. I must admit that is a good option. Pin it as much as you want to pin it and don't forget that we're going to move this zip slider around to suit us as we stitch. Um, and you'll probably end up opening the whole thing up to be honest. Get, get past that first little bit and then open it up. There we go. So that, that will do. And then by the time I come down to the bottom here, that'll be lying nice and flat. So you can see how I've got it pinned. Um, and like I say, it's going to come round here. But I'm, I'm fine to do that without any pins. It's just this little bit here. So I'm going to switch to the front and, uh, and just stitch that. I know you won't be able to see anything, but we've just done it. And if you're not sure, just watch the video back. And then you'll be able to see. But all I'm doing now is, is I'm capturing that other side. I've got, I haven't moved my position of the needle on the zipper foot. I've literally left everything as it is. So I'm just following round. I've got it all pinned. I'm going to use my um, stiletto, my pokey tool, whatever you want to call it. We've all got names for these things. Just to help me keep my zip in place and go around all those uh, those bends and just make sure that as you take the pins out the zip 
T, uh, zip tape doesn't want to uh, shift. It will. But zips are nothing to be frightened of. I, it's just a case of going slowly. You'll never see me speeding around a zip. There's no point. We just go nice and slowly. Take your time. There's never any rush. So let's just finish that last of it a little bit. So I'm coming down to that corner again. And there we go. And if you need to, when you come to the end, if you need to trim or tidy things up, then please do that. We're not perfect. If we were perfect, well, there'd be nothing to learn, would there? Oh, I've run out of bobbin. Can you believe that? Or is it thread? Oh, it's top thread. I've got to do that all over again. All right, let me think. Where is my thread? Is there any near? I'm not sure there is, just bear with. You can have a look at my back screen. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. Uh, I forgot to check my top thread. Uh, okay, I've got green. Ah, I've got the tiniest bit of cream here. That, that might do it. <laughs> I've never done that before. I knew it was low earlier on. I, 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 um, I changed it earlier on. Well, no, I didn't change it. I re-threaded it because I had some red thread on. And I thought, oh, I must remember to change that. Well, obviously I didn't. Obviously I didn't. But this machine has a fabulous needle threader. Um, so, <laughs> so I won't be um, too worried about threading it. Well, I'm never worried about threading it. It just sometimes takes time. Um, so let's just, I had it looped around the hook. Never, ever, ever pull that thread um, in case you, you bend the hook. The hook is a tiniest, finest piece of wire. So you've got to be really respectful. It, do you know what? It did, look, it didn't stitch anything. Can you believe it? <laughs> oh my gosh, how funny. How funny. How funny. Call yourself a professional. All right, so let's start again. So this time we're gonna stitch the second part of the zip in place. <laughs> oh dear. So of course all my pins are out now. So we just follow the zip and don't forget this time we're stitching because <laughs> I thought it was going to be quicker we're stitching the lining and the outer at the same time let's just move that zip slider let's just get around this corner and then I'll move it back so what would you make this who would you make this for what would you use it for have you got an idea in mind of what you might use it for um, I, I think it would be great as a teacher's gift. Maybe, you know, I mean, it's a bit late for Valentine's Day now, um, but you could put chocolates in there. So just slowly around the corner. So because obviously I, I sorry, my microphone is digging into my tummy. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, so just take your time coming around the corner there because I snipped into it. It's it's great. So I'm moving my zip slide around. I know you can't see anything, but you've already seen me put half in. So during the interlude, <laughs> you can uh, you can look back on that if you need to. And uh, like I said five minutes ago, if you get to the end and you need to trim. Then please trim. As I said, we're not perfect. We all can learn. Um, the other thing you could do is to get your pinking shears and you could trim down your um, fabrics. So there we are. So let's get it so it's right side out. So that's our purse so far. <laughs> Sorry, it's a bit long-winded, um, but that's our purse so far. Now. Um, 
Kath top stitch, so I better top stitch. So I'm going to open this up just so it's a little bit easier. So let me show you on the overhead how we're doing so far. Let's just get the fancy running out of thread. I don't mind. I'm sure you don't either. So there's our purse so far. So you can see what it looks like. We've got the lovely Union Jack fabric or Union flag fabric inside. Um, and then we've got the gorgeous London fabric on the outside. I absolutely adore it. So the best way to top stitch is always to press. Now, of course, you could do one side, then press and top stitch and then do the second side. Um, but you might as well do it all in one go. So just make it nice and neat. Now, the, the nearer you can get to the zipper teeth will really help you when it comes to putting the purse together. OK, um, the nearer you get is definitely an advantage. So let me just press this out. Um, because of the way we turn through and we use those tabs as um, a sort of a, a stop point, if you like. And the reason they're f a little bit further away from the um, end of the fabric is because it, um, it makes them lie better. It makes them lie better. Now, I don't really want to iron my zipper teeth, but I will just get in there. There we go. Let's get my iron in there. It's not, not very interesting, but let's do it from that side as well. In fact, it's easier, I think, to turn it through. There we go. And because we've got the ends on the zip, um, it just holds <coughs> everything and you're, you're not going to be worried about losing uh, your zip slider because everything is contained. So let's just press that down and what you can do is as you're pressing you're, you're sort of lining your sides up to make them super neat. There we go. Just iron that all out. And if when you top stitch you miss some of this lining, you know what, Don't please don't worry about it. If anybody inspects your purse lining to see if you've caught the top stitching, well, we know what we know what they can do, don't we? <laughs> they can find another friend. Um, so again, we're going to top stitch along these curved edges here. Can you see how beautiful they look? Um, and then we're going to just pop the pop the purse together. It's almost completed. So um, let me pop you on the side camera. There we go. And I'm going to change my zipper foot. So take this one off. I mean, you can keep this on for going the, doing the top stitching, but your regular foot should be able to cope with going over the zipper teeth, especially if you've got a nice wide one like this. So just open up your purse and then all you've got to do is go round. Now you might find it's a little bit tricky to manoeuvre because we've got a curve we've got to go around. You can see what it looks like on my machine. But just, just work with it. Just open it up, lay it flat like that. Um, let me see if I can show you better if I show you like that. Just keep it laying flat and then you can work your way around it quite easily. Like I say, don't worry about your lining. It's better that your front, you know, your outer top stitching is nice rather than the lining. See if you can get round that curve um, well. Um, if you can't, then just do the best you can. And um, you might want to use your um, stiletto again. Make sure your zip slider is out of the way. You just do that. Hold on. That's it. Because this is actually this is quite a big <laughs> zip slider. It's um, bigger than what I normally use. Um, and I got my current zips from Zipper Station. If uh, if you want to know. So that's one side done. So let me show you what that looks like. There we go. All right. So now we're going to do the other side. Now you don't want this top stitching to be too wide. Um, I would say eighth of an inch is your absolute maximum. Um, 
So I've just come to my zipper slider again, so I'm just going to move that out of the way. Difficult to see, I know. Sometimes it's easier to have um, this angle for some things, not for others. Just work your way around, use that pivot again. <laughs> I'm trying to get my hand out of the way, but it's almost impossible. And see the wrinkles on the back of my hand, lovely. Um, so I'm just working my way around. Because of the curve, it just won't sit flat. But I'm sure you forgive me for that. So look, as we come down that side of the purse, can you see? We're just literally top stitching, but not too wide, okay, not too wide. Okay, so I'll just leave you there for a sec. So now we've got a few ends we can just trim off. That's what it looks like. Let me zoom out a little bit and see if I can get it going the right way. Okay, that's not too bad. So that's what we've got. So now we need to join the, the, the lining and the outer pieces together. So all you're going to do is take hold of the lining if you've got your outer showing like this. So take hold of the lining and just fold it, fold your outer fabric back on itself like this. Keep your zip open for when you're turning through and you'll end up with a shape just like the purse. But it's almost like, you know, when you're making a regular pouch, um, you've got those sides to go all the way around. OK, now um, in the pattern, Kath says to leave a straight edge um, open for turning so that that back seam is what we can leave open so we can start stitching about um, about an inch from where the zip is here and then we're just going to carry all the way around if you're worried about whether your zip tabs go in or out okay I always push mine out but you might want to do different to that it's not for me to say to you what to do other than that's what I do so Make sure that all your right sides are together. That's what it should look like. We're going to start stitching about here and I'm going to go all the way around and I'm going to stop stitching about there to leave about a two inch turning gap. OK, so let's just bring you back in here. And that's actually better, isn't it? A little bit more zoomed out. I'll remember for next time. So try and get your seams lined up, do a back stitch so um, it's secure. Get your um, stiletto again, make sure your seams are as lined up as you can get them. Make sure also that your zipper tab is going, I like to think, inside the purse facing up and you're just coming down like that. So you're coming down to the corner, you're going to pivot and turn going to line your fabric up, fabrics up again to make sure you get them as best as you can and now you're coming down that bottom seam and you're coming up to the other end of the, the zip now and again once again try and push your zipper tab out make sure that that zip slider is not near your machine so I'm just moving that an inch in that's all don't close it line up your seams as best you can and obviously, if you make one or two of these, it'll get easier. It really will. Um, and then just go over your seam. So don't forget, you've got the end of your zipper tab just there. But we should be going past it. You're putting your fabrics together as you go. Pin if you want to. Um, use your quilter's clips or even your quilter's tape. So we're coming down to that last corner there, coming back up to near where we started. I'm just going to do a back stitch and again, and just cut my threads. So not huge amounts of back stitching. I've still got thread in my machine, hurrah. So you can see that's where I started, that's where I stopped. So we've got that gap just there. There we go. If you want to, you could always um, just bring those seams back and press them so you're ready to stitch your turning gap. Um, don't stitch it now, obviously, but you could press that so it gives you a nice folded edge like that. 
Um, so Kath says you might find it easier to enlarge the template and make a bigger one at first. Oh, do you know what, Kath? I think that's a really good idea. Um, so it gives you that confidence to try something a little bit smaller. I think that's a brilliant idea, but only if you, you need to. Um, so all I'm doing is snipping into this to reduce some of the bulk. Um, you could um, just snip at the end of your seams as well if you want to. Use your pinking shears, but then you're just going to turn through that tiny little gap there. I go right to the other side of my project and push that edge or that corner through first and then all the rest will follow and pull it if you need to. But don't, don't rip anything, just be gentle. Just take an hour to make a little purse, you don't want to ruin it. And if you need to, make the gap a little bit bigger, but you, you shouldn't need to. Two, to. A two inch gap should be plenty, it's only a little purse. Now, um, Kath suggested stabilising with F220, which is a lightweight to medium weight in, uh, iron-on interfacing. Uh, I would imagine it's more for dressmaking than it is for bag making, purse making, but it is nice and soft. Um, I've used a G700, which is just as, as nice. Um, you don't have to use any interfacing at all. You can just leave it as it is. Um, I'm going to, obviously I'm going to stitch the turning gap later, you know I always do, so, <laughs> which means I won't. Um, <laughs> just push out your ends, do you see how that zip tab looks amazing on the end there because it's so neat and tidy? And use some uh, decorative fabric, so you know, maybe you could use plain red in there, or plain yellow even, just to make it pop. Um, and, and get your finger in the ends where the zip is and push those ends out and that will square it up. And then obviously you're going to push out this corner here and do get a pokey tool. So do get a blunt ended pokey tool is good. Something like that. OK, even perhaps even more blunt. So a knitting needle is good, but a size 10 knitting needle, not anything smaller. So just work that corner out. And then obviously it just needs a jolly good press. There we are. Now you can decide also which end that you have your zip um, your zip slider. So for instance, on this one, I've got the zip slider finishing here, okay? But you might want it so it finishes up here. That's up to you, okay? You have, to, uh, you have lots of different ideas of how you can complete your little purse and what you can do with it. And then of course, we can put a little tassel on the end there. Really good press and that's good to go. And I love the fact that I got I Heart London in there beautifully. So there we are. That's finished. Well, it needs press, which I shall do when I'm off camera. And I might even stitch the turning gap. <laughs> I might bring it to La La Land so you can inspect my work. <laughs> yeah, perhaps not. Um, <laughs> so there we are. So there's the London one made. And we've got the little owl one as well. So think of all those gorgeous fabrics that you've got. And uh, Try to, try to make it quirky, try to make it yours. So you can see on this one, my hearts are this side. On this one, my heart is this side. The reason for that is that I didn't want to cover up that. <laughs> I know, I know, I, lo I love, uh, I love the, the fact that we've got the choices with this sort of fabric. Um, and we've got the beef eaters on there as well. Can you see the beef eaters? I mean, they're great, aren't they? Who doesn't love some London fabric? I think, you know, even if you were abroad, you'd probably want some London fabric as well. It's great. Lots to learn with this. How to put zip tabs on, how to put a slider on a zip, how to pink your edges so you get a really fluffy heart, um, how to do top stitching carefully and slowly, how to make sure your tabs go or your zipper tabs go inside into the main piece of the fabric, not the other way. It, it doesn't matter depending on your, your stitch, um, your seam allowance that you've done, all of that. But I think Kath's idea of making a bigger one as maybe just a tester is a brilliant idea. You'll always use it, won't you? I, I always use my things. Honestly, when I go away in the motorhome, I must have at least 10 of my bags with me, all different sorts for different reasons. So this will be another one to take with me. Maybe it'll have my, uh, my bus pass in. <laughs> <laughs> my library card, except I don't have a library card. <laughs> 
if I had one, I'd use it. So um, we've got the giveaway. So with Facebook, with Facebook, you know that I will do the giveaway in about half an hour's time. So please visit in about half an hour. I'll edit the top of the video to say whose name got picked out. I'll probably get John to pick a name. He doesn't enjoy it. He doesn't like to be involved, but yeah, make him, I make him. <laughs> but YouTube, I can, pick, um, I can pick a name because all the live comments are here. And funnily enough, on YouTube, it's the opposite. The, um, well, kind of. It takes about a day, and I'm serious. It takes about a day for me to see the live chat. I don't ever see it straight away um, it's ridiculous and I can never ever reply so if you ever ask a question I'd like to think that one of my admin team has answered you because I, I really really unless I'm being completely idiotic I have never worked out how to reply afterwards I know I can reply now but I, afterwards I can never reply to a live chat I don't know why it's a shame anyway I'm going to go right at the top of my my feed there there's lots of lovely comments I thank you so much so don't forget if I pick a name and you're in the States or outside of the UK, I'm going to send you a five pound Amazon voucher because of the cost of postage. <laughs> cool. <laughs> I had to take out a second mortgage. Um, if you live in the UK, um, you'll get uh, these two little, two little things. They're stuffed and they're plain because you're meant to stamp on them, paint on them, crayon them, draw, embroider patchwork you name it that's what these are for okay not not just to be like that that would be a bit boring wouldn't it especially if we're stitchers so i'm at the top of my comments and don't forget if i do on facebook pick the same name i will pick another one okay because that other week uh, it's fair it's fair so i'm not gonna i'm not gonna look i'm just gonna zoom up and down i'm just gonna make sure how far i've got to zoom that's lots lots of comments thank you so much so i'm just going to zoom up again and i'm going to stop just there my, wherever my mouse is is here oh it's emma <laughs> emma says what is a clapper now i wonder if i can find it abigail sells clappers it sounds a little odd doesn't it here we go mine isn't um, from abby mine isn't from abby um, but she is getting some more in stock. She's got a lovely, lovely man making these for her. A clapper is a piece of wood. It's usually made out of beech because beech is good for soaking up heat. So when you press something, so you've pressed it on your mat here. I haven't got a sample now to show you, but when you've pressed it and you've maybe folded and or pleated or made a seam, once you, once you put your hot iron, take your iron away, pop your clapper on top. And what that does is it, it takes the heat out of your patchwork or whatever you're doing. And it actually presses it beautifully, really crisply. You won't believe the difference it makes um, having one of these. OK, uh, and like I say, I think Abigail's going to be getting some more of these. And that's avidcrafts.com or sew with Abigail. Get sewing with Abigail. Yes, get sewing with Abigail. Um, so ask her about that. So, um, I'm not going to say send a message because that's not the way to do it. But anyway, but I'll have a word with her. And so, yes, yeah, so the clapper is all about making your the folds that you've done, that you've pressed beautiful i can't tell you the difference it makes and i should have mine beside me all the time but you know I've, I've got a mass of stuff around me so well done emma well done emma that's fantastic oh i'm so pleased for you that's just amazing oh nicola says it's a wooden block that you apply to a seam to remove the heat oh see she says it in one sentence i have to have about 10 paragraphs so well done emma i will send those to you you can have the white ones if you want, you can actually you can tell me since I your first. You have the white ones or you can have the linen look ones. I don't mind which. Obviously, I don't mind which. And um, I'm sure Catherine will help you decide what you're going to do with them. Because <laughs> it just so happens Emma is Catherine's friend. 
Um, so that's lovely. And um, I won't pop anything in the comments. I'll do it later. Um, but on Facebook, and I, I will remember that name, actually, because I do know Emma. She is a gold lady. Um, Emma, I'm going to write it. No, I'm not. I'm going to put it on the pattern. Emma. So if you could private message me, Emma, with your address, that would be super. And then in about half an hour or so, depending on how long it takes for Facebook to load all the comments, um, I will pick somebody from the comments. I'll get John to pick it. I'm so glad you joined me this evening. It's been an absolute treat. Don't forget to book your tickets for La La Land. Uh, honestly, every day now, Abigail um, has a ticket go through, or two, or, eight, or four, <laughs> go through the website. And we are now dwindling down. We're not in single figures yet, but I reckon in two or three weeks time, we may well be in single figures. So that will be close to 200 ladies um, coming to uh, the conference center near, uh, near in Birmingham, near, near New Street Station, if you're at all. Um, interested um, and we've got the most amazing projects lined up for you which um, I've been uh, I'm going to get all the bits and bobs from Abigail I'm going to stitch up for you so you can see what we're doing it's all hand stitching you don't need to bring a sewing machine please bring scissors essential and all your sewing kit so I would suggest you bring pins and clips and a needle lots of different colored threads and maybe bring some embroidery thread as well you never know you might need that but your basic kit enough so you've just got a small bag of stuff okay um, you could bring things like bonder web heat and bond steam seam that sort of thing just small pieces not huge big pieces you could bring quilters tape that could be useful as well um, maybe some Taylor's chalk or a, or a pencil that you can mark things with. <laughs> I know the project, so I know what you need. <laughs> um, yeah, so all of those things um, would be useful. Um, don't forget them because it'd be difficult to share, won't it? If uh, if you forget, so please don't don't please don't forget. But don't bring huge amounts of stuff. I don't want to be. I don't want to see great big suitcases for sort of stuff. You only need a small. You know when. Um, I've got I use Stella a lot when I'm going to a workshop and this is the sort of thing this is the sort of thing that you can let me just show you that you can bring with you that has all your trinkets in okay needles pins threads little scissors clips your quilting tape a little bit of bonder web all that Heat, heat and bond, all of the, all of that. Um, maybe, like I said, some embroidery things. I think I said that. Some perle cotton, that would be quite nice. Um, like I said, a good supply of needles so you can thread them. Needle threader, bring a needle threader. <laughs> but don't bring your sewing machine, totally unnecessary. But have a little, little thing like this. This is Stella off my website that you can just pop all your bits and pieces in and fold it up. Hope you enjoyed the, the live. Um, please um, make sure you like the page and, and I hope you've shared it. That would be amazing. Um, and I'll all see you all again next week. Don't forget tomorrow at two o'clock in the afternoon, I am live on this page, Lizzie Curtis with Sarah Payne. And we're going to be talking about her, her kits that she does and all of her fabrics that she has in stock and all her bits and pieces, her patterns, all of those sort of things. Maybe her books. We'll, we'll see what she's got in store for us. So I'll be chatting with Sarah for about an hour. Um, so don't miss that. That's on Lizzie Curtis at two o'clock. If you're in the gold group, I'll see you on Thursday. Um, if you're not, if you're making it Monday, guys, I'll see you next Monday. Bye, everybody.